Hello everyone, this is Daniel Andersson from Modelon in Sweden. I will do the presentation today of the, this library. So an introduction of myself. I've been at Modelon since 2010 and my main tasks here have been consulting in the field of thermodynamic system modeling, mostly towards the automotive industry uh, in engine system modeling, cooling systems and heat exchangers and so on. And lately I've been focusing more on product development and uh, I'm the lead developer of the engine dynamics and liquid cooling libraries that we will that you will hear more about here today. The agenda for the day will be looking at an overview of liquid cooling. We will look at key features and capabilities of the products. We will see uh, an example use case uh, on vehicle thermal management. Uh, on, and that is made on a passenger car. Uh, the application is from an anonymous car OEM manufacturer. We will look at the contents of the library briefly, uh, what, comp the what components and medium models are available. And finally, we will have a, a small, short demonstration of the library in Daimola. After that, there will be a time for questions for you that you can ask me. And we will then move on to engine dynamics after this. So the core of liquid cooling is a high performance incompressible flow model, which allows you to model incompressible circuits and also closed Joining circuits in a high performance manner. So you get good simulation times and robust models. This is a problem when using Modelica standard library components that you get large nonlinear systems and low robustness and performance. On top of this incompressible flow formulation then are a lot of both generic and geometry specific flow components such as pipes and bends and junctions and so on. There is also a uh, uh, quite large amount of uh, cooling media models such as water and different glycol mixes and so on. So the library is suitable for a quite wide range of applications ranging from automotive, aerospace, industrial equipment and process industry. The real limiting factor here is that we only support single phase liquid coolants in the library but it could be used really for cooling and also heating applications and so on in different industry excuse me this is michael from munich just a quick question uh, do we also provide some kind of a, a, a library of different fluids you know some kind of a property library not currently that I know of. We have included in this library a number of uh, medium medium models that would be suitable in this kind of applications. So we will see a list of that in a few minutes. Okay. En cours de connexion à la conférence. So the library components in the library, the components are highly customizable and that is true for most Modelica libraries. They are built up on, on templates and interfaces and a user can easily duplicate or modify or extend the components that are in the library to create custom components that they may need in specific applications. So the key features, there are a large set of fluid components. Uh, generic and geometry based ones. This distinction that we have made, the generic ones means that they are very generically parameterized such as flow, cross-sectional areas, heat transfer areas, 
and so on. Uh, the correlations are replaceable, meaning that they can be modified to fit most fluid components that you would find. Geometry-based components are for a fixed geometry, for example, a pipe, you would specify only the pipe length and diameter. There would be a bend component where you specify the bend angle and bend radius. And also the correlation has been also predefined in that case. So the user will only have to specify the geometry and is then set up to do a simulation of that. The loss coefficient data we have used in the library is from a book by D.S. Miller. And that is also the same source or same reference data that is used in Flowmaster, which is a competitor to the solution Daimler plus liquid cooling. We currently do not have all the components that are in this book, but we have the, the most common ones and the ones available will also continue to grow with later versions of the library. The medium property models that we have is water and also water solutions of glycols, alcohols, glycerol, ammonia, and different kinds of salts. You will see a list of that later. These property models handle varying, varying concentration of these mixes. That means that a user can easily specify and obtain data for, a, say, water glycol mix of a specific concentration by simply just specifying the concentration. The uh, models are valid in the complete liquid range, so that is from the from the freezing point to the boiling point. And these points are also specified in the library so that a user can see what range of valid validity the model has. The components are also plug and play compatible with other model on libraries that you will see presentations on later. It's recommended or or common to use the library together with some other libraries such as the engine dynamics or heat exchanger libraries to get even more and detailed components for specific applications. The key capabilities then would be a lot of different applications for example, cooling system modeling in automotive and process industry. One example is engine cooling or and battery thermal management. The library can be used for component selection and pump dimensioning. And setting up such an such a task would be to to model the circuit, all the included components, and you would then use a uh, prescriber flow through the circuit and look at the resulting pressure drop over the complete circuit. And that flow and pressure drop result would then give operating conditions and requirements for the pump, for example. You can do system performance studies when you have a complex cooling system and look what are the capabilities given specific flow rates and so on for that given system. We also, of course, have transients in and dynamics model within these models, such as solid components heating up, and that would be modeled by simply simple lumped thermal models in that case. All the pipe components and so on that have a length also includes a transport delay of the temperature so that you can study the, the uh, temperature front, for example, through a system, study the system heating up and where, where the dynamics are. So by the available components, it's easy to realize non-standard cooling circuits. The one in the picture here is a very simple example of how a system model based on liquid cooling can look like. 
So you have typical components like a pump and volumes. There are also thermostatic valve and a simple heat exchanger model for a radiator in this case. The models can also be used to support and a control system development where a dynamic model of the cooling system is very helpful for, for example, controlling pumps and fans and valves in the system to optimize the system layout and control system. Well, uh, this is Michael again. I have one question. So how do we um, uh, take temperature effects into account? Is it like this that you can sweep uh, the environment temperature, uh, which will then uh, change the, the properties of the fluid? Or can you really apply dynamic temperature profiles, for example? So all the medium all the medium models have temperature dependent properties. So you can apply uh, different boundary conditions on the system. You can apply, uh, for example, a ramp or a, for a heat flow or a temperature on a wall and study the heat transfer. You could also have a more detailed heat exchanger models where you exercise uh, flow and temperature profiles from a drive cycle for example where you have uh, where you apply dynamic boundary conditions with transients and study the dynamic response of the cooling system so could you for example also investigate let's say the the temperature drop of a pipe yes you can in that case we have discretized pipe models and you can specify either a constant wall temperature or a temperature gradient and then couple that with a heat transfer model to the liquid. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. So how does um, the models behave in case you have any capitation? That would have to be supported by in the component models where, uh, for example, the pump, if you have cavitation, that um, uh, flow correlation that is covering that is applied. So we don't cover uh, vaporization of the liquid and so on. Okay. So, so, so does this mean in case you would, uh, let's say, drive the whole system in and, uh, let's say, uh, in a range where it comes to cavitation, would you get some kind of a, of a warning that you maybe drive the model uh, outside or, or uh, uh, an allowed range or something like that? Not in the standard setup. So that would be a good point for me to look at how to further improve the 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 number of warnings that you have it, in Daimler, you have certain yeah, how to handle that in a clear way for a user. It's possible to, to have sensors like this that would show the operating point, but not mm -hmm. to couple that to a cavitation effect directly at this moment. Okay. So moving on to an example use case for a vehicle thermal management application. And the problem we've studied in this case is to balance the system level requirements for a cooling system on a passenger car and balance that with the energy usage of the system, the overall energy usage. So the solution would be model-based system design and optimization and then using the models for control design. The tools we've used here is Daimola and the liquid cooling library together with the heat exchanger library to model the cooler radiator stack of the vehicle. It would also be possible to use other libraries to get more realistic boundary conditions for engine heat generation and the load of 
auxiliary systems like the air conditioning system and generator and so on. The workflow has been to calibrate and validate the component models and subsystems and then build a system like this and exercise the system over critical drive cycles and perform optimization. So some properties of these models is Liquid. that it includes a vehicle models with the different loads and losses in the system. Uh, we have, for example, engine heat generation, friction and transmission. We have done a simple lumped thermal model of the engine where different parts of the model is simply captured by simple lumped thermal masses and heat, linear heat transfer models. The coolant and oil circuits have been modeled with the liquid cooling libraries. And it would also be possible to include other thermal fluid circuits in the model. The drive cycle includes the vehicle speed and load and also the wind, wind headwind conditions for cooling. And airflow effects have been captured by the heat exchanger stack in this case to couple with the maximum cooling power of the stack. And we have then done some control of the of the fan and key valves in the system. So looking at the model, you can see the different parts it consists of. So we have a coolant loop model, which Join is coupled the to the heat exchanger stack. This is also coupled to the transmission. And then there are simple thermal models of the engine, underhood compartment, transmission, and so on. We have very simple models for the electrical system. And then there is also a fan and a heat exchange stack, which is captures the, the effects of the wind speed through the stack. So just some simple results of that. You can see the vehicle speed and engine torque for a cycle and then for example we come to a point where there is a high load at a certain certain speed we can see the uh, cooling water temperature increasing reaching a near boiling point in this case that triggers a fan command and the fan speeds up and you can see that this causes a temperature decrease in the coolant and when the coolant temperature is then low enough, you can see that there's a bypass valve opening, bypassing the radiator. So looking at some components in the library, we have pipes and bends. So that includes straight pipes and different kinds of circular bends and mitre bends. There are flow resistance components uh, these have, there are geometric loss coefficient data for orifices, uh, intakes and abrupt expansions and contractions, also long orifices. We have closed volumes and an expansion volume and an open tank model in the volumes package. In the junctions package, there are quite a lot of different geometric models for different T junctions with different branch angles and symmetric T and Y junctions. For the pump and fan, there are models that can be parameterized by simple equations for head versus flow and power versus flow. And you can also specify table-based pump and fan curves for these components. We have included in the library simple heat exchanger models, simple in the sense that they consider a lumped flow on the boundary. For example, uh, an airflow would consider just a lumped airflow. So we would not in this library cover effects of inhomogeneous flow or inhomogeneous temperature profile of the air. So the heat exchanger models we have here are based either on a tabulated efficiency or an epsilon NTU approach. There is also a simple discretized 
ETA change your model where you specify basic parameters such as flow areas and heat transfer areas directly. Then there is a package with components for defining boundary conditions. Uh, also some flow modifier components and these are used to specify a flow rate in a closed circuit or specifying the temperature to a fixed value in a certain point in the closed circuit. There are components for heat transfer in solid material and that is quite similar it, to the package in the Modelica standard library. There are some additional components, for example, heat transfer in a, in a long solid bar with, which is discretized and has uh, convection and radiation effects. There are coolant and refrigerant models for single phase region for quite many common mixes. Uh, the properties are used from a reference called the uh, Properties of Secondary Working Fluids. That is a book from EEF or International Institute of Refrigeration. And you can see a list here of the available water mixes. So we have quite many different salts, solutions and glycol mixes. And as I mentioned, it's possible to, to specify easily the concentration of the mixture. Mm -hmm. So, so are, are these fluids which are more used in, in the uh, automotive industry or more in the aerospace industry or what are the, the typical applications for those liquids? Uh, glycol, for example, is commonly used in automotive and also aerospace. I think the salt solutions are more commonly used in building, building cooling and heating systems, for example. I'm not sure for all of these what the actual applications are. But these are, we have implemented all the ones that are available in, in this reference material that we have. That would be the end of my presentation for the liquid cooling library. And I will now show you some parts of the library in Daimola. So what you can see here is the top level information of the liquid cooling library. And it's opened here in Daimola. You can see the package structure is organized for the different components. If we open the volumes package, we have different um, components for liquid and gas. There is an expansion volume and a tank volume. Using these components is e easily done by drag and dropping to the diagram layer. If we look at the parameters of the components, we have selection of the medium models. And here you can see different options that are from the library. Uh, so there are predefined medium models for a number of concentrations and some of the mix mixes are just a single concentration and for another concentration the user will have to, to create that model by simply modifying the concentration. I can show you how that is done. If we look in the flow resistance and pipe and also the split and join package, you can see that it's divided into a generic and a geometric package. The generic one contains components that have replaceable correlations and there are some generic correlations available, for example, commonly used Darcy Weisbach formulations and different kinds of equation-based and table-based correlations. If we open the geometric sub-package, you find components that are parameterized solely by the geometry. For example, a contraction component is parameterized by simply choosing the medium model 
and specifying geometry for for this specific component. Uh, I've I've another question related to that. So as far as I understood, uh, understand, the user has to get sure that he sets the same liquid for every component, right? Yes, that is true. Uh, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I recommend that that is most easily done by either building your system and then selecting. It's possible to select multiple components and selecting that for every component. Oh, I see. Okay. It's also also recommended to if you have larger system models to divide it into subsystems, and it's then possible to for that subsystem set the medium for the complete subsystem. But yes, it, it, a user will have to select the proper medium for all components, that is true. Just a little comment here. Cours de connexion à la conférence. Do you think you can go into edit option and increase the font size a little bit? Absolutely, good point. <laughs> Thanks. Is that... Large uh, enough? Is it more? That's good. Thanks. Okay. For the pipe package, the geometric components that we have are straight and circular, straight circular and straight rectangular pipes, and two kinds of bends, which is either circular or mitre. We take the bend component in this case, you can see that the parameters are what you'd expect for a bend. There's also good documentation of the loss coefficient data in this book by D.S. Miller. The Oops, we have an error here for the images, Eric. <laughs> that was not so nice. In the distribution, you will find all these tables of the loss coefficients, uh, the tables that we have used. They are all available in the information package of the components. I'm not using my regular computer here, and that's why this is not working. <laughs> Sorry. If we look in the split and join, package, we have quite a lot of dividing and combining junctions, and these all have geometric loss coefficient data for the specific geometry. There are junctions at different angles, for example. There is also a T junction component where you can select the branch angle if you do not not want to change component all the time. If we look into the valves package, we have some different control valves and also thermostatic valves in the library. And these are two port and three port configurations. For this component, you can specify the opening logic and it is possible to capture hysteresis effects. And that can be done either by specifying linear functions or tabulated values for the opening characteristic. It's also possible to, so by default, this valve is controlled by the internal liquid temperature, temperature on the temperature of the incoming fluid. It's also possible to enable an option to control this valve by a temperature from any other source. So you would then set the temperature sensor in the system and you can control this valve by any temperature in the system. In the pump 
and fans package you find the pump and fan components. For heat exchangers there are different kinds of gas gas and gas liquid 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 configurations. Within such a package there are different options for a different parameterization. So this one takes a, a table of efficiency values as at different flow points for the primary and secondary flow channel. There is also a, an epsilon NTU heat exchanger model. There is also a package with heat exchanger stack examples and this model provide a measure to build simple stack models for automotive applications where they would have multiple overlapping heat exchangers and this is a way to use the simple lumped heat exchanger models in a stack and you would then have to specify the fluid properties and also the overlapping areas of the different components and there is a guide which is also in a picture how you specify these overlapping fractions the flow modifier components you used in closed circuits when you want to set the flow rate or the temperature to a given value in a specific point. It's possible to set constant values or assigning that from a signal, which could be a ramp or measured values from a drive cycle or similar to that. There are also source components, for example, a component to specify a liquid flow. It's possible to specify either mass flow or volume flow rate. If you, you can either specify constant values or enable a connector, for example, if you want to have the flow from a signal, you enable that option and you get the connector for the signal. The component can also handle different units of the incoming signal. If you have measurement values in some unit, it's possible that the component can handle that directly without any external preprocessing of the unit. For example, if we have a pressure signal, it's possible to specify that in diff uh, different units. Finally, there are also some, some examples and experiment models in the library for different kinds of cooling circuits. These examples illustrate a bit how components can be connected within the library. And also this display sensor that we have. This sensor simply displays the fluid properties in a specific point in the circuit. We can choose to simulate this model to illustrate how this will work. Simulation is quite fast. And after simulation, these values will then be filled in and you can also play this and look at the transient response like this if you want to. One other feature that I should mention is this aggregate volume feature. It is possible to use it to calculate the total liquid volume in the system. You simply drag this component into the system and on the components you can specify whether this should be included in the total volume calculation. This is the default setting here is true to include all the liquid in the system. After this simulation has been run, it's possible to look in the aggregate volume result 
And you can see what is the total liquid volume in the system given all the pipe geometries and volume sizes and so on in the system. We can see that there is some variation of the liquid volume and that is due to the uh, temperature transients in the system that we have a small, very small volume change within this example. So this feature can be used for dimensioning expansion volumes, for example, where the total system volume is setting the requirement for the expansion volume. Uh, just Michael again, I have a, maybe a general question which is somehow related to that. Um, uh, I experienced in the past that due to integration errors you might have um, liquid losses which are actually uh, are, which do not really exist. Do you have any experience here if, 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 if this might be an issue here? I would believe that the error you are referencing occurs maybe in two-phase in two-phase media. I'm not quite sure where the example that you mentioned come from. The mass balances in, in these components are all actually static in this case where you have incompressible flow models. So the system will be conserving all the mass. Sure. Okay, so I'm 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 aware of applications in the past which were especially related to cooling systems and uh, due to the integration errors in um, during the simulation. Uh, you, let's say as you said, sometimes some kind of artificial. Um, uh, Liquid loss, yeah. So, when, for example, uh, another uh, common uh, problem is, for example, when you simulate um, purely mechanical systems and you do not uh, use the right solver, then you get an artificial damp damping, for example, which is uh, is actually not really there. Uh, so this is kind kind of the same kind of the same effect. Uh. I think I will have to come back to you in that question. I do not believe that these models are are sensitive particularly to that kind of effect. Okay. But I, I can certainly come back to you in, in that question. Okay. So are there any more questions on the liquid cooling library now? I think we are. Yeah, I have one more general question. Would it make sense to use those also in conjunction with a hardware loop or would those kind of system uh, achieve a, uh, a real time once you, you would uh, um, simulate uh, uh, them on a hardware loop from using the code generation capabilities? So my personal expertise is not really in the hardware in the loop uh, requirements, but I would, so we don't, we, and we have not done any live example of that using these models, but I would suspect that these are quite appropriate for adapting to such an application since the, compo the models are all explicit. Uh, if we look at the, uh, translation log here, we can see that there are no nonlinear systems with iteration steps and so on, but that is also, I guess, limiting the stiffness of the system if you have very fast uh, transients and so on that may be, have to be adapted for a hardware in the loop simulation. Mm -hmm. So, uh, do you think uh, you, you might encounter problems once you um, use you, you switch the solving algorithm to an uh, explicit order you need for, for example, uh, real-time simulation. That is also actually something I I will have to test before I can really say something in that in that area. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
Hello, Leo Gall here. I've got a question. Um, I saw a lot more components than I have in Daimola on my Daimola 2013 FD01, and I think that's because I have 1.0 and you use 1.1 Alpha for the for the presentation, right? Yes, that is true. So quite a f quite a lot of components are actually new in the the 1.1 version that will be a there will be a an alpha very soon and and available with Daimler 2014. Okay, which will and which will be released in May. This is a secret, but <laughs> I can tell you anyway. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Hi, it's uh, Alex from KTEX. Uh, I wanted to know if the liquid cooling library is compatible with the air conditioning library, please, It'll, so whether the connectors will uh, will uh, allow exchange of um, air between the two libraries. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Uh, the air conditioning library uses, uh, it's not connector compatible and uses another medium formulation. So they are unfortunately not compatible directly in the fluid connectors. So what you could do is to, to model separate circuits with the two libraries and they would could be connected on, on the thermal side, for example, That's using the thermal, thermal connectors. But this is also something that we are working hard on currently to, to be able to have a, a all compatible platform and uh, we are currently developing a vapor cycle library that will be able to model two-phase circuits and be completely compatible with all the thermal libraries that we will be presenting here, including liquid cooling, engine dynamics, and the heat exchanger library. Compatible on the one the thermal port side or also on the fluid? Also on the fluid in that case. Okay. So is your aim at some point in the future to have all of your um, fluid uh, or libraries containing fluid components to be compatible with each other? Absolutely, that is the target. Okay. What sort of um, what sort of date do you have in mind? What um, from you know what what sort of year? We will aim for having an alpha of the vapor cycle library this summer, maybe in June or July. So for customers, maybe another six months from then? Yes. Okay. Thanks. Uh, the other thing I wanted to ask was, um, for some components <coughs> within the liquid cooling library, which are um, basically extended from uh, Modelica standard library with no modification, are you intending on uh, adding some enhancement to these to these components? Uh, in future release of liquid cooling, or are they just going to remain as uh, direct um, extensions of Modelica standard library components? I would say that the number of components that are direct, uh, directly available copies from the Modelica library is, are quite limited here, but we definitely intend to develop all the components that are in this library. Okay, thanks. Um, actually, just very last question. Um, so especially, I mean, the, the component to specify a, a rotational boundary condition, of course, is maybe not that, that it needs to be improved further, but the underlying fluid assumptions and so on, they are all new implementations in this library, they are not at all the same as what is in the Modelica standard library for the fluid components that we have here. Another question from Leo, um, do you have experience with initialization of large systems? So if you have 100 components, let's say in a building system, will it initialize? Or do you have any, any tricks? Are you using the homotopy stuff or to, to improve initialization? We have currently not used tomotopy in, in any of these components, no. Uh, typically you have 
now that's as tricky initialization for uh, for an incompressible fluid model I think where you only have temperature states and uh, split and rate. you avoid uh, big nonlinear equations y yes so it yes should be better I just wanted to know if there if there's experience with large systems if it's going to work or not we have done some applications with this library with pretty large systems but in that case we have not used for example steady state initialization so but specifying direct initial values is certainly not a problem okay so you used fixed initialization then yes okay <laughs>